So hi, my name is Deekshan Chopra. Uh, thank you all for having me here. Super excited to talk to all of you. Um, I think I am the only thing standing between all of you and lunch, right? Okay, so I'm going to try to keep this short and snappy. If anyone has any questions, we can quickly take them up at the end of the session. Does that sound good? Okay. Perfect, perfect. Uh, just to get a sense of uh, where all of you are from. So how many of you here are from MCNs or agencies? How many of you represent brands? Uh, maybe brands. Anyone here? Okay, so I can make all those jokes about brands. Okay, anyone from the MCNs or the agencies here? Okay, so I will cut out those jokes. So I'm going to talk about creators. I'm going to make some jokes about crypto and blockchain maybe. Let's go with that. <laughs> will do, will do. Okay. Okay. So now creators have been selling things on YouTube for years, maybe decades, right? The thing is they've been doing it in a very, very hacky way. So they create their own products. They put up links in the description box, which is a part of the holy trifecta of like, subscribe, and links in description and often on other, other platforms, right? But it's a bit of a cottage industry. They do this themselves, they put links in the description, people might discover it, people might not discover it. Overall, it's, a, it's an experience we haven't spent much time thinking about, right? However, we do want to change that over the next few years, given this space has been exploding. Okay, now not only have creators been selling their own products, they often act as guides to a lot of viewers, right? Viewers who want to buy products come to YouTube as a part of their shopping journey. They come to know what their creators want, what the creators recommend. If other people have any opinions about the products they're gonna buy, right? So I'm sure if any of you have been on YouTube, uh, you've seen a lot of unboxing halls or how to tutorials, like how should you do makeup, how should you set up your computer, so on and so forth, right? Also, influencers and creators often talk about the things they love to the people who really, really care about what they talk about, right? So anything a creator says often is taken as gospel. Now what we want to do over the next few months and years is help give creators a platform which is more friendly to their shopping journey, right? So they do what they love with the content that they create, but can we make that experience better for the creators and make that experience better for viewers? Okay, now the first question that would come to mind is, um, is this the right platform for shopping, right? I'll give them a minute. Okay, now I believe it is. I'm assuming some of you here believe it is, but the data also bears that out. When we talk to viewers, we consistently hear that over 90% of them find out about new products on YouTube. Also, when a creator gives them a recommendation, they often trust that recommendation and act on that recommendation, right? So what a creator says on YouTube and what they hear is a very, very important part of their shopping journey. Okay, now let me talk about what YouTube shopping is and what we hope to achieve, right? So what we want to do is not change YouTube. So YouTube is still the place you can go to make the content that you love, whether it's across shots, live, or classic video. What we want to do is start creating hooks in that experience where people who are watching that content now can seamlessly go and start shopping, right? So as you're watching that video, we will start creating these hooks and little pop-ups and like little nudges to you to let you know that look, the stuff that you're reading about or hearing about or watching is now available to buy right now. And hopefully nudge some of those viewers in the direction of completing their purchase or at least finding out more. Now the experience we want to build will cover both the creator's brands. So if a creator owns their brand, of course, they can buy it or sell it to their viewers. This is something they've been doing for the last two or three years. The big thing that we're changing now is allowing brands and creators to collaborate more closely. So if a brand and creator have a commercial relationship, 
the creator now will be given a set of tools where they can directly feature the products from that brand or from that merchant, right? Those, let me see if I have some mocks there, yeah. So if I were to look at the first mock, which is a classic video on demand, uh, wh while watching a video, the brands that are, or the products that have been featured will be easily clickable, and clicking on any of these links will send you out to the merchant. Same, short form video or live streams, which is by far my favorite. While watching that content, viewers have the ability to just click on that little pop-up out there and go directly into the purchasing funnel. Now in the past, we had integrated with creator focus retailers who would help creators create their own merchandise, right? That's been around for a while. What we've realized is that the, the entire e-com world is of course a much bigger pie. So what we are doing is A, giving creators the ability to set up their own stores in Shopify so they can directly start selling their products. We are also uh, giving them the ability to feature third party products on those Shopify stores. So let's say a brand, I'm just gonna randomly pick one, Samsung has a relationship with the creator. Now, via a Shopify integration, and we will expand this to other e-com platforms as well, Samsung can now make a deal with that creator, and those Samsung phones, the Samsung TVs will show up as a part of that content, and will be easily, you can click out, learn more about the product, and start your purchase journey instantly. Okay, now why should creators do this? Uh, I know the answer is painfully obvious. It is to make more money and to help create viewers understand which brands they're passionate about or the brands that they support, right? So we've seen some major successes already in Southeast Asia and North Asia. So Mr. and Mrs. Gao are a very popular set of creators in um, Taiwan, even though I think they're based in Singapore. So they launched a new set of merchandising as a part of their 5 million subs milestone. Um, sorry, okay. Again, a massive success. They closed, I can't give out the number, but a ridiculous number of orders within an hour. And uh, hopefully we'll see them do this much more often. Now, Korea is another place where we're seeing this really, really take off. So creators are engaging with brands. They are selling everything from meat to groceries, to science sets, to utensils, everything through their platform. And we're seeing both viewers really step up and support their creators and buy many of these things in quantities that, uh, to be honest, surprise me. Okay, now how do you get, how do you join this party, right? If you're a brand, um, talk to the creators that you have a relationship, talk to the MCNs you have a relationship, there's a good chance a lot of the creators that you're talking to will get access to this feature in the next few weeks and months, right? Now, if you are a creator, I will flash a QR code right at the end, but we do have, an, have a way for you to check eligibility. We are progressively opening up this feature over the next few months, and there is a good chance you already have it or you will get this very, very soon. Now, if you are a merchant, other than, of course, making that like talking to the creator that you want to work with, um, you just need to do a simple integration with YouTube. Many of you have done this already, and uh, that's it. It's plug and play. Now, we've literally just started building this, right? We are in V1. You will see V2. You'll see V3, V4, V5 as Google builds this out. Uh, we've already started launching new features like Q&A. So creators, can, you can ask your favorite creator question while they're talking about the content and they will reply to you. We're also running a host of uh, new events across the world where we are introducing a lot of viewers to shopping on YouTube. Uh, this is literally day one of a very long journey and I'm super, super excited what we do with this. Okay, so that's the QR code in case anyone wants to know a little more about it. Um, that is it from my end, but happy to take any questions if anyone has it, or grab a coffee later if anyone wants to learn a lot more. So I've got a question over here.
Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I'm actually like interested to know this one because we are, I'm working, planning to work with a brand. So he's uh, selling mushroom bags instead of the typical leather bags. So that, that's something that I want to know. Is there like a case study that you included in for this kind of arrangement? How does you do shopping use best way if I'm not affiliated yet with the brand, but like let's say if I carry brand agreements or something like that. Because I think the issue is YouTube tends to favor like the brand owners, maybe not the creators to work with the brand. So that, that's one. The second scenario is probably like in South Asia, your competitor, I think you probably know who they are. They do help creators like brand creator kids and then they help like recommendation of certain contents to push out all that. So how does YouTube tends to compete in this space? Both very good questions. Uh, on the first one, right, um, how you could do this? Again, very early days, but the process itself is very, very simple. Of course, you can click out and learn more, but uh, once you're eligible to get this feature, all you need to do is tell the merchant to upload the stuff he wants you to talk about onto the Google uh, Merchant Center, which is an uh, experience that we have, and that's it. And you should be able to tag it instantly. So it's very, very simple. Um, I'm sorry, what was your second question? Oh, no, here. TikTok. TikTok, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I admire TikTok. I think they've done an amazing job. Yeah. And uh, the tools that they offer are best in class. Of course, um, they've got their own ecosystem. We are, have our own ecosystem. I think there's space for more than one player. And you will see us introduce many features which we think sort of naturally fit into YouTube. I'm sorry? Okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I just cut off a short one. So what I'm trying to understand is because TikTok, they have an ecosystem that I allow these features to be in clickable first time when they do live streaming. So that's from China. So I don't know, YouTube has your own range of product that you have in the ecosystem, like maybe in Google Drive, mobile apps and everything. So I don't know what's the advantage if I want to choose YouTube versus the current TikTok. Because creators are very busy. No, it's, uh, I agree, you are very, very busy. So uh, the way I would look at it is, you've got your subscriber base, your fans on TikTok, right? Uh, you probably have a whole universe of fans on YouTube as well. Why not talk to both, right? Talk to both, see which one works better for you. Uh, we've both built slightly different platforms. I'm not sure which one will work best for the kind of products you wanna talk about, but I would encourage you to test. Other questions? Up, oh, up here. I've scanned the QR code. I noticed that the um, service is available only in the US and other places. When are you gonna bring this service to Singapore? So it is available in the US, it's available in Korea, it's available in India as of today. This might be out of date then, I should talk to the tech team about it. Uh, this will come to Southeast Asia very soon. So expect many of these things to progressively launch across Southeast Asia over the next six to nine months. Yep, so stay tuned. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, do we have any other questions here? Got, got one of the top guys in YouTube shopping right here. Okay, here, here we go. I'm just curious about what are some of the current top most pain points that people are, that are currently facing on using the platform, the shopping platform. Got it. So the shopping platform itself is very, very new. I think the shopping platform was created to solve a lot of the pain points that we were seeing around shopping on YouTube, right? So if you look at the current experience uh, right now, uh, let's suppose you've got a unboxing video of a Pixel phone, right? Now, the creator might have a relationship with, pick a retailer, uh, Shopee, okay? So now what would happen is the creator would be like, I love the Pixel phone, it is amazing, it's got all these cool new features, uh, you're gonna get an extra discount if you buy with my coupon code on Shopee, right? That's how it would usually happen. Now, what would happen, he would put a link in the description. If you're a viewer, you've got the description, reach, like opening the description requires you to click. There are a ton of links there. There's a ton of text there. It's not a great experience. You click on that, it'll try to open the app. If you don't have the, open, have the app, it'll open an M site. You might not be logged in. Like the entire experience is quite clunky. You've got to be a pretty determined person to go through the entire experience. 
what we want to do is change that and make it a lot more useful and a lot more magical. Now imagine if you take the same experience, uh, you've got clear product tags, product cards, which show you, okay, this is the phone he's talking about, here's the price, here's what the price is across various merchants, this was what the price was a week ago, now it's at 10% off. Clicking that directly opens up the cart with the discount coupon put in already. So if you think about it, we've moved from a clunky experience, which is text-based and across multiple apps, multiple hoops, to potentially, which is something cleaner, simpler, and hopefully uh, more magical. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool, magical experiences with shopping. A um, Couple more questions, hold on, I'm gonna go here and we'll come back down there. Thanks. Um, I just have a general question. How are you guys thinking about protecting YouTube's like brand integrity with things like uh, delivery issues happening, returns, all of that kind of stuff? It's a good question. It's something we're still thinking about on how to build this. This is very, very important to us, right? But this is also one of the reasons why we are being very, very thoughtful in how we open this up. The first, of course, protection we have is YouTube creators are very, very passionate about the, about the platform and the fact that they're a credible voice, right? No creator wants to recommend something which is dodgy because they know that that's when they lose the trust of their fans. So just the fact that it's opening up to the larger creators first, you will see that they will naturally act as a barrier and make sure the quality is high, right? Second is, we are also being very thoughtful around the merchants we work with. So you will see that we are, we are focusing on the more marquee brands and the bigger marketplaces first, who have their natural filters in place, right? Now, if you go and shop and say Amazon, you're pretty sure the product that you bought will show up at your house. The third thing is currently checkout doesn't happen on YouTube. So we will send you to Shopee, Lazada, Amazon, or any merchant retailer's website where you will purchase this. So all their natural protections will kick in. So if you are comfortable buying on, say, Shopee today, this is not very different. Cool. Um, another question over here. Actually, I was about to ask you about Amazon's integration with YouTube. Like, so uh, I'm, based, I'm a tech reviewer based in Singapore. A lot of my reviewers, uh, my vi viewers come from the US and they shop locally in Amazon US. So how does that play into a, like a local Singapore creator? Like if I put a link to Amazon, uh, will the link take them to Amazon US or Amazon Singapore? Yeah, really good question. Yeah. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, the way we set this, this entire tech stack is currently in V1. We are building it out and making it more and more advanced. As of now, based on, based on the experience you choose, the features that you've been opened up, there, if, you, if you were to tag a product from, say, a product that's universally available, Google's AI will decide where to send you whether, based on your viewer's location, whether it should be US or it should be Singapore. Um, in case you decide to tag a specific retailer, like you have a relationship with Shopee and you're gonna tag them, then of course we will have to send them to Shopee. So we are creating various features which will give you the flexibility to see where the creators go, where the viewers go, sorry. Again, but early, early stages, we're all gonna learn together. <laughs> awesome, uh, other questions? All right, well, thank you so much for coming and sharing your expertise. Um, give it up for Dikshan Chopra from YouTube talking about shopping. Thank you, cheers. And I love the attitude that they have of, you know what, we're gonna figure it out together. But we know that YouTube creators love to talk about products, love to share products with their audiences and their communities, and it's just a natural to do this. So it's great to see, so thank you so much. Yeah, fingers crossed, hope we got this right. Yeah, you'll get it right. It's Thank you. We will be back in this room at two o'clock. Uh, we've got um, Jamie Lim here who's gonna talk about getting started on creating content. So really good sort of creative kick in the, uh, in the solar plexus to try and figure out how to create content. So hopefully we'll see all of you then, thank you. <laughs>